What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight. Tonight! All right, we're coming back to Muse. Yes, indeed. Muse fans, feeling you. Come on now. Here we go. This is a request from Thistlestock, Gaspar Chan, and Dennis Guinness. They all want to see me react to this song by Muse called unnatural selection now have i heard the song before no i have not to the best of my knowledge i have never heard the song before this does not resonate with me in any way shape or form however there's always a possibility i may have heard the song in passing and i just don't realize it so as always if i start listening to the song and i suddenly go wait a second i recognize this i'll let you know that's the truth you know me, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was posted by Muse and Mexico, and the video has 89,467 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Muse, Unnatural Selection, Rock M Ring 2010. I want to play Rock M Ring. That's a, one of the biggest festivals in the world. I would love to play there sometime. It's a good one. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm digging this song. I, I'm I'm digging this song. This song feels good. Um, he's not going up into that breathy, you know, thin falsetto that he does. He's staying in a great register for him. Very powerful, very strong vocal performance from him. Uh, the riff being performed by both uh, guitar and bass sound great driving forward the drumming style very floor tom heavy um not very simple heavy at all it's like kick floor tom and snare that's pretty much it which i dig i absolutely dig that it's got that driving pulse which i really like uh it feels good on top of it all i'm seeing some good showmanship from these guys i know i've been critical in the past of them and not having good so you know having good stage presence and stuff like that in this song i'm seeing it i'm seeing it here um i appreciate it so it looks good i you know matt coming up bringing the guitar up playing it you know up here at 
looks good. You know, walking on the stage, rocking out, bass player rocking out, moving around a little bit. That's what I'm looking for. I know a lot of people are misconstrue what I'm talking about when I say stage presence and showmanship. And I, I love this one comment that this one viewer made. You know, I don't need my I don't need my musicians to be shot out of a cannon to be impressed. You know the funny thing is, neither do I. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for them just to move around. I'm looking for them just to pick up their feet out of their spots and just stroll across the stage. That's all I need to see. I don't need to see them jumping through hoops. I don't need to see butterfly kicks. I don't need to see somersaults. I don't need to see acrobatics. I don't need to see all that crazy stuff. How about you just pick up your feet and move around the stage? That's all I need to see. Moving around, interacting with each other, interacting with the crowd, having a good time. That's what I need to see. And I'm seeing it here. I didn't see it in that other performance that everybody criticized me for. You know, I, I don't need to see... You know, I, I, I keep going back to that one comment. I'm sorry, I do. But I just thought that comment was hysterical. I don't need to see my you know, musicians get shot out of a cannon. <laughs> Neither do I. But how about they just pick up their feet and take a couple steps? You know, that would be great. And they're doing it here, which I'm glad to see. So, anyway, let's keep going here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, maybe not. That's what he was doing. He was doing it right there. And he did it just fine. He did it just fine. You know what that's called? Crowd interaction. They are fully capable of doing it. He just did it right there. Oh my God! And he got the crowd to put their hands up. And the crowd all followed. Every single time. Every single time. Every single time. They followed him. Why? Because he took the time and the effort to actually do it. So he is fully capable. So for all the Muse fans out there who are making the excuses that he can't do that, he has to focus on his playing. Forgive my language. I'm going to have to beat myself here. Bull shit. Bull shit. He just did it right there. So don't tell me he can't, because he clearly can. He just did it. So for all those Muse fans that are making excuses and saying, well, he shouldn't have to worry about that because he has to play the guitar. He just did it. 
He just did it. Unbelievable. Now where's your argument? Now where is it? To all the non-believers. Get some facts and come back and see me. That's pitiful. I mean, it's absolutely pitiful. Apologize. Yeah, apologize. Apologize. Dear Lord. He did it, and he did it well. Really well. So don't tell me he can't do it. He clearly can. Clearly. And he did a great job of it right there. Kudos to him. Awesome. Awesome. On top of it, the song is rocking, man. The song is absolutely rocking. I love the play of feel. Switching between straight time to halftime. I'm loving that. Um, bassist is all over the place with his bass, man. There are times he's down low. There are times he's coming up high. Playing like a secondary guitar almost. It sounds good. But here's the thing. It never bottoms out. It, it never... He never stays up so long that it loses it. You know, he, he'll, he'll come up for a bit, do what he needs to do, and then he's right back down again, covering the bottom end. Smart bass playing right there. Very smart bass playing. Let's keep going here. See, I'm digging this. I'm digging this song from a audio standpoint, from the songwriting standpoint, and I'm also digging it from a visual standpoint, from the live performance. I'm digging both sides of the coin right now and again for all those muse apologetics you know that had to sit there and go well i would rather him focus on the playing than on the performance he can do both he can do both they can all do both they're doing it right now so get over yourselves Seriously, stop apologizing for your band just because, you know, they, you feel like they don't have to when they're fully capable of doing so. Dear Lord, I'm complimenting the hell out of them right now. And watch in the comments, I'm still going to get those muse purists who are going to sit there and defend them and say, well, they shouldn't have to. Why wouldn't you? If you're capable of doing it like they're doing right now, why wouldn't you? Go ahead. Make the comments. Prove me right. Prove me right. Please, <laughs> make those comments. Prove me right. Be one of those people, by all means. I'm enjoying this. I'm having a good time with it. Let's keep going. Love it. Leave the crowd. Oh. Going into a shuffle feel here. I'm going to rewind. I want to come back into that. That was a great vocal entrance. Do I need to say anything else? Nope. Do I need to make the case in point any further? Nope. Going into that solo section, getting down on his knees because he's feeling it. That's the truth. And putting on a great show showmanship, stage presence. Here it is!
Do I really need any further evidence that Muse is fully capable of putting on a great stage show with stage presence? Do I need any further? Ladies and gentlemen, this is my opening argument, my thesis, my supporting arguments, my bibliography, and my closing statement all wrapped up in literally four minutes. It's all here. Wow, man, freak out. Mmm, I am so glad. I am so glad that this got requested. I am so glad I'm getting to watch this performance. In particular, after getting all the criticism that I got for criticizing their live performance of that one show, when I said I, I didn't see anything. I didn't see, all I saw them do was stand there and play. There was really no stage presence. There was no crowd interaction. There was no interaction with each other. There was no, there was no charisma. There was no nothing. And there wasn't. And all the Muse purists came to the defense of Muse and saying, they don't have to. They don't need to. They shouldn't have to. What do you call this? What do you call this? I call this a great performance. Great. Not good. Not pretty good. Not okay. Not even really good. Flat out. Great performance. And if anybody has the audacity to challenge me on this and say, well, they don't need to do all that. Yeah, you know what? You're probably right. They don't need to do all that. But you know what? It looks great, doesn't it? Visually, doesn't this add to the performance? Simple answer? Yes. Yes, it does. There you go. There you go. Let's keep going. I'm rocking out with it. Nice. Coming out of that slow 6-8 feel. On the, not a 6-8 feel. They were, they were in 6-8 period. But coming out of that 6-8 slow shuffle feel. Yeah, it just, God, that feel, that 6-8 slow shuffle feel. And then you heard the hi-hat. And I'm like, yeah, they're going to go back into it. Nice. Nice. 
No, look, it's smart, man. It's look, they could have ended the song doing that six eight shuffle. They they could have, and it would have worked. I wouldn't have complained about it, but I am so glad they came out of it and are going back into the straight ahead feel like they had for the song's beginning, the first part of the song. They're coming back to it now. It's come around full circle. Love that. Absolutely love that. And they did it so nicely, too. Letting that 6-8 shuffle feel kind of, you know, decay out and just go and dissipate, dissipate, dissipate. And then you heard the hi-hat count off eight. And I was like, yes. Yes. Let's keep going. This is awesome. I'm digging this. Absolutely digging this. Now, you know what? I want to hear it again. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back. No! No! I don't care. Hey! It's my show. If I want to go back, we're going to go back. I like that vocal line. I dug that vocal line. That was nice. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. Again! Doing it again! come out now let's see all those musicologists come out now and defend them saying well they don't have to do that they shouldn't need to do that but they can they can look at that look at what they did on that stage right there that was outstanding outstanding god anyway Whew. All right, uh, I got a lot I want to say, and I'm going to do my best to condense it down to like 10 minutes, but you might want to grab a snack. You're, look, we're going to be here a while. Um, let me gather my thoughts. Like I said, I'm going to try to condense them down as much as I can. No promises. I'm going to try to keep it under 10 minutes, but... I cannot make that guarantee. There's a lot that needs to be said. I will see you in the review. We will talk about it. Seriously, you might want to get a snack and get comfortable. We are going to be here a while. Well, there you go, folks. That was Muse with Unnatural Selection. This was a request from Thistlestock, Gaspar Chan, and Dennis Guinness. I hope I pronounced that name right. All right. I think this might be the highest score I've ever given Muse. I, I think it might be. I don't think I've given them any. If it's not the highest, it's tied with the highest. I'm not sure. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that a 9.3. Yep. 
9.3. I feel great about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay, I'm gonna take all the obvious stuff and I'm gonna save it for the end, okay? I'm gonna get to the I'm gonna get to the complex stuff first. Let's talk about the songwriting on this song. Great song. Great song. One of my personal favorites from them now. I, I can honestly say I enjoyed the hell out of this song. I love the movement of uh, or the use of uh, change in feel from straight time to half time, back to straight time, back to half time, back to straight time, back to half time, and then they came down to the, going from straight 4-4 four, four into this slow 6-8 shuffle feel. Yeah, that worked so well, I did not see it coming. It came out of nowhere, and it was so smoothly done. They stayed there for a while, and now, this could have gone two ways. I, I, I could have seen this going one of two ways. They could have ended the song like that, stayed there the whole time, finished out the song, and I would have been okay with that. I would have been okay with it. Instead, they did what I was hoping for, and they clicked back in into that straight 4-4 four, four time again to end the song. Yes! 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 That was awesome. Loved that. Great arrangement uh, from an arranging standpoint. Great way to arrange the song to give it some differences, to give it some creative flow, to make sure that the song didn't become stale. It's very easy when you're playing a song that is over six minutes long. It is very easy to, for the song to become stale and repetitive. This song never felt repetitive or stale. It felt good the whole way through. Uh, the bass playing on this, the bass player going all over the neck. He was never staying in one place with his playing. Sometimes he was down low, sometimes he would come up. But the thing is, and what I really, what I really dig about this guy is he's got a great sense. I know I've said this about him before. He's got a great sense of knowing just how long to stay up. He comes up and he plays and he knows when he's done enough and he needs to go back down again. He never overstays his welcome high up on the neck. And I can absolutely appreciate that. One of my biggest complaints about baseball is when they go up and they, you know, they, and they go up, you know, for whatever reason, they overstay their welcome and they stay up too long and the bottom end gets lost. Now, if you have a keyboard player, which Muse does in this song anyway, who's able to cover the bottom end, then the bottom end never dissipates and never truly dies out. And that's okay. If you want to stay up on the neck, then that's fine. But he still doesn't. He came up, did what he needed to do, and right back down again to cover the bottom end. That is the sign, or one of the signs anyway, of a knowledgeable bass player who understands feel and knows how to play, but more importantly, how not to play. So... Kudos to him. The drumming on this was fantastic. I loved the drumming on this. Uh, yeah, okay, symbols were used. Yes, symbols were used. But what was the driving force on this song? It was the kick, it was the snare, and as a special bonus, it was the floor tom. Loved the feel on this song from the drummer. Really did. Um, and then... What made it even more impactful is he's, he's playing along. He's got this beat. He's got this pulse. He's got this feel going for him. And then he switches up to that 6-8 shuffle. And just like flipping a switch, man. It was just, it was like all of a sudden you were transported to Chicago. You know, 1962, Chicago blues. You know, you're in a smoke-filled club with the blue lights everywhere. And you were there, man. Stupid. You know, just, God, it felt good. It felt so good. It felt natural. It really did. It felt amazing the entire way through. Uh, Matt, his guitar playing, immaculate. Sounded really good. Did exactly what needed to be done there. And his vocals. I dug the vocal performance on this. No falsetto. None. Everything he did was chest and blend. None of that breathy falsetto that I am not a fan of. I make no apologies for that. 
I have no, I want to make this very clear because a lot of people in the comments in the past have been, well, you just don't like falsetto. I respectfully disagree. I'm a big King Diamond fan, so of course I like falsetto. I like falsetto when it's strong and full and supported, not when it's airy and breathy and thin. I cannot stand falsetto like that. I just can't. When the falsetto is supported, full, strong, powerful, projected, I dig that. I absolutely dig that. When it's thin, breathy, hollow, no. I, I, I'm not a fan of that at all. And I was glad to see he didn't do that. He stayed in a great register for himself, strong, all the way through. Dug it. Now, let uh, the song itself, the song on its own, would get like an 8.8, 8.9 from me all day long. So how the 9.3? I'm going to tell you why. Here we go. Are you ready for this? Brace yourselves. And get comfortable, because here's where I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant, and I'm sorry, but it has to be done. Yeah. When I did... My second time doing, uh, what's the name of the song that I did? Uh, Butterflies and Hurricanes. I thought I made it pretty clear, but maybe I didn't. I had already done Butterflies and Hurricanes before. I had done the song, and I loved the song. I forgot the score I gave the song. Let me, really quick, let me, uh, let me look it up. What score did I give? Butterflies and Hurricanes originally. Okay. Uh, oh, there. Wow, well, there it is. That says it all. When I did my original reaction to Butterflies and Hurricanes, I gave it a 9.0. I gave it a 9.0. I loved the song. Okay. I was asked to do another reaction to Butterflies and Hurricanes for the live performance. And I made it very clear. At least I thought I did. I thought I made it very clear that... I was not going to judge the song at all. I was only going to be basing my score and my reaction and my evaluation on what they did on stage, their live performance. And I did. And I forgot the score I gave them. It wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad score. But for music, it was like the one of the lower scores I've given them. I think I gave them a, when I gave them a 6.8, I think. Let me look. Hold on. Right up here at the top, right? Yeah, but if I was Mary Kings, but a 6.5. Okay, so I gave him a 6.5 based on the live performance. You would not believe the number of hateful comments from Muse apologists. And that's the only thing I could call them is apologists because they were sitting, literally sitting there making excuses and apologizing for the band, for what they did. Folks, that's not your job. That is not your job. You don't need to sit there and apologize for the band, especially when the issues are glaring, okay? Listen, that performance that I watched, it was not a good live stage presence-based performance. Did they play the song? Yeah, they played the song, absolutely. But as I made this abundantly clear in the video, I was not judging them on the song at all. I was only basing it on what I saw what I was looking at, the stage presence, the stage performance. And then I got the other haters who were sitting there going, well, I don't need to have my musician shot out of a cannon to be entertained. I'm not asking for you to be shot out of a cannon. I was thoroughly entertained with what I saw here, okay? I'm not looking for people to be shot out of a cannon. I'm not looking for acrobatics. I'm not looking for backflips. I'm not looking for butterfly kicks. I'm not looking for people jumping through flaming hoops. I'm not looking for any of that. All I'm asking is, how about we see some movement and motion? How about the musicians pick up their feet and move around the stage? How about the uh, how about the band members give a crap and actually interact with the crowd? How about that? And then all of those same people who were coming down to me defended their band again and said, well, they shouldn't have to do that. They should be focusing on playing the music. And I'm like, again... I don't understand why you're saying that because the band, as we just saw, is fully capable. 
Now, if your band's not capable of doing that, then by all means, go ahead and say so. They never responded to that. But clearly, this band is fully capable of doing everything I look for in a live performance. Let's go down the checklist. Stage presence, check. Crowd interaction, check. Um, charisma, check. It's all there. It's all movement and motion, check. It's all there. This was my complete argument, wrapped up with a pretty bow and served on a silver platter. So, so to all of those news apologists who are sitting there making excuses that their band shouldn't have to, but they can. Clearly, they can. So why don't they do that all the time? That's my question. You kidding me? Born to do it. They can do it here. They clearly did. They did an outstanding job of it. They put on a great live performance. They interacted with the crowd, the stage movement and motion, the stage presence. I loved it. I mean, this is something so simple. When the guitar player, Matt, when he went down on one knee and he was playing, how cool was that? How cool was that? Was that being shot out of a cannon? No. Was that jumping through a flaming hoop? No. Was that doing a backflip through a through a flaming hoop? No. Was that doing a somersault underneath someone doing a butterfly kick? No. But it was still cool to see, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Absolutely it was. Moving around the stage. Face player, rocking out, head banging. Moving forward and back, interacting with the crowd, leering into the crowd, pointing into the crowd. Check. Saw all of it. That was great. That was fantastic. So now my question is to all those Muse apologists who are sitting there making excuses and accusing me of being too harsh and expecting too much. Was that too much? Was what Muse did, was that too much? Was that being shot out of a cannon? Still love that one. That was one of the most ridiculous comments I've ever seen in my life. Was that being shot out of a cannon? No. Jumping through flaming hoops? No. Butterfly kick over a somersault? No. Backflip off an ego block? No. But it was sure as hell fun to watch, wasn't it? Absolutely it was. And they can clearly do it, and they can clearly do it well. There it is. My art. Uh, that is that is my entire argument. Anytime someone ever says that Muse shouldn't have to, or Muse can't, or Muse you know doesn't need to, I'm gonna refer them to this video right here, and I'm gonna say, watch this video, then after you've watched it then come at me by all means bring it on i dare you because i'm gonna shut you down every time because this is the only argument i need right here is this video this video did it all it did it, it, this video showed everything i'm looking for in a live performance so to anybody who feels like Coming at me with, you know, oh, they don't need to do that or they shouldn't have to do that. I'm going to say, watch this video and then tell me they're not capable. They are fully capable. So don't tell me they can't. Don't tell me they don't need to. Did you not see that crowd having a good time? Did you not see that crowd interacting with Matt with the hands? Did you not see that? I saw it. And I enjoyed it. I was very impressed, which is why I am giving this the 9.3. Now let's see all those Muse apologists come at me and complain. Let's see it now. Prove me right. Prove me right. Please do. Go ahead and come at me like you guys did when I did the second reaction to Butterflies and Hurricanes when I was very specific 
that I was not taking the song into account. I loved the song. I gave the song a 9.0 way back at the beginning of the channel when I first heard the song. Give it 9.0. The song is great. I wasn't reacting to the song. I was watching and only watching and evaluating and scoring the live performance. And let's be honest, that live performance of Butterflies and Hurricanes, it was not very good. It was not. They hardly moved at all. No crowd interaction. No stage presence. Nothing. Nothing even remotely close to what we saw here in this video. That's why it got a 6.5. In this case, with the amazing live performance that we saw, this is getting a 9.3. And it deserves every single tenth of a point of that score. It absolutely does. So let's go, haters. Bring it on. Prove me right, please. Please prove me right. Prove to me that there are just blind Muse fans who apologize and make excuses for their band. Go ahead and come at me with the hate now. Go ahead. Prove me right. 9.3. Final score. I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hopefully, you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job. And I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys would like to join the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to click the bell, go ahead and click the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference to me. But if you guys would like to do these things, then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.